Yeah, I've always been a large-scale painter. A lot of my paintings in uh, early days were anywhere from you know, five to eight feet uh, in dimension. I like splashing color on there and uh, trying to get you know, the, the, the paint to do its thing rather than trying to meticulously paint every, every detail. I'm um, located in Sauk Center, Minnesota. I grew up here. I left uh, well, pretty much when my college days were over. I got a job in California painting and uh, developing a uh, reputation out there. I had a you know, couple gallery shows that uh, were successful and then uh, ended up getting uh, uh, pretty ill. Then after that, we needed some money. So my wife and I started a, a craft business. I did the designing, she did the business end, and uh, kind of took off from there. I was able to uh, pretty much pursue what I wanted after that, and uh, now I'm back in Sauk Center. I uh, came back here probably about 10 years ago after my wife died, and uh, this is home. This is where I want to be right now. I've had my days in the sun. This is the sun I want now. We've been working on a historical mural in Sauk Center on the wall of uh, the building that at one time was the Belmont Hotel. We've been working on this mural project. It started uh, last summer in 2014. We worked on it for about four to six weeks and did four panels of the six panels and then we came back for the last month to finish the final two panels and add a few things to the original four panels. To be a muralist, uh, especially for this job, you had to tell a story. It wasn't just one object that you're painting like you do in a, in a landscape or a still life. We had six panels to work with and so I wanted to tell a story of the history of the town from the early days when you know, Native Americans were there and settlers coming in all the way up to uh, our favorite son, Sinclair Lewis. So it, uh, every panel had a little different story, a little bit different time, but I wanted to make sure that the, uh, there was a flow. And so we had the river flow in each panel and the hillsides, they all interconnected and everything, even though the time and the people changed, the landscape and the river were the same. So when you look at the mural, you see it starting with Chief Hole in the Day, who was here before any of us. And he's kind of looking, you know, we, we would joke about Chief Hole in the Day thinking, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> I really like what we've done with the town. I think we've given it a lot of character and all the little signs in it of all the former businesses. I look at that overview of the town more like a, like a historical novel where it's a little bit all over the map. You know, there might be some parts from the 20s, like the World War I soldier is riding home, but you've got cars from the 50s. So it's, it's a little artistic liberties taken there. And then we do have Lindbergh's plane also flying over the town. If, if you get up close enough, you can see Spirit of St. Louis written on the side of that plane in the fifth panel. We had a World War I uh, soldier in the foreground writing a letter back home. And in the background then you look down and you see an overview of the town. That moves into the next picture where part of the town extends also into that one. And then there's a large figure of Sinclair Lewis looking down over the town also. It's been a lot of fun working with some very talented artists. Uh, it's different working you know, with others rather than on your own. So you're constantly, um, you're getting feedback, you're giving feedback, and it makes the, the whole project, I think, better. I work with a group called the Wall Dogs, and every summer we go to a small town and we paint and it really, it empowers the town. 
It brings the town together. It's community building because obviously a town has to raise money to do that. But then when we all descend upon the town to paint those murals, people come and they talk to us. They want to know what we're doing. The conversations that I hope to happen through this mural are people coming up and they'll go, well, is that Indian a real person? And you go, yeah, that was Chief Hole in the Day. So we have this opportunity for people to learn the history of the town and they maybe would never have even thought about the history of the town, but now the mural is sparking that conversation. Uh, we've gotten so many comments of people going by and beeping their horn and uh, great job and thanks for that. And it was, it was really, really kind of a nice experience. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. I think that through public art and in particular through murals, um, that are more literal. They create an accessibility for people to relate visually to history and to their town and to town pride. And that is a real, just a community builder. I think Minnesota is absolutely a great place for the arts. I mean, not only the, 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 the support on a daily basis from people you know, looking at it, but also from the different um, programs that, that do allow us to do projects, public art projects, that uh, normally would not be able to be, you know, financed. Yeah, I do like public art and I do want to do more of it. We have a band shell in our town park and it's a huge uh, structure which would be a great venue for doing uh, another mural. I guess at this point in my life, my art is something I'm really enjoying because I know the days are numbered and it's just very sweet to kind of leave your mark a little bit here, a little bit there and have fun doing it. It's just fun to be able to wake up in the morning and think of what can I do today? This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts, offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. Explore hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for a great vacation or a place to hold an event. ExploreAlex.com. Tri-State Brain and Spine Institute. With locations in Alexandria, Edina, Crookston, and Maple Grove. Doctors dedicated to evaluating and treating all types of brain and spine problems, no matter how complex.